All right, then there you go. Everybody's unmuted and we should be live now. So good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you guys are. Welcome to the live stream. Today we have some very, very special people on the stream and we are going to talk about some interesting topics today. So why don't we introduce ourselves? Uh, Simon, would you like to go ahead and uh, introduce yourself to the uh, to the audience? Yeah, for sure. Hey guys, my name is Simon. Uh, I've been doing YouTube for uh, a year now and I am originally from Shanghai. I've been uh, staying in China for probably uh, more than 25 years now. So yeah, just an ordinary Chinese dude. So Awesome, awesome. Uh, Mike, would you like to introduce yourself as well? Yes, hello, good morning guys. Uh, this is Mike. Uh, I'm also from Shanghai and I'm Chinese and uh, yeah, I have been doing YouTube for almost a year and uh, from this year since the coronavirus, I have to stay in China, but I can uh, make some uh, videos about China. So yeah, awesome. Awesome. And we have a very special guest who's making a first time appearance on uh, on the stream and it is Prime in China. So would you like to introduce yourself, Corey? Uh, sure, yeah. So, uh, as you said, Prime in China, American, um, lived in China for uh, six years, six years, two months, and returned this year to America. And um, I've just been sharing my experiences on YouTube for, uh, I guess, about three years now, and uh, just kind of telling people what I've seen, uh, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly, and, and just everything. So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right then, uh, so today we are going to talk about, you know, um, are Chinese people like money oriented? Like, do they only care about money? Is money like the most important thing in, in China? And obviously we don't want to, you know, um, be racist about it or, or, or pick on, you know, just Chinese people. But um, since we, we, we all have experience living in China and, and experiencing things, uh, it's a it's probably a good idea to to show this to to other people and and talk about it. So uh, Simon, you've made uh, some pointers and some side topics for us. Uh, would you like to bring up the uh, the first one and uh, and introduce it? Sure, for sure. Uh, so uh, let's just go with the first question since I am um, Chinese so. Uh, my experience is largely limited in China. I do lived in the U.S. for like two years. Uh, now I am in Taiwan for like two months. So my question to you guys is that do you think China is the uh, most materialistic country you have ever lived in your life? So you guys want to uh, talk about that first? Sure, sure. Uh, do you want to pick anyone or do you want to answer first? No, uh, Zach, you want to go first? Uh, sure, absolutely. So um, I lived in Hungary and I lived in England as well. Now I'm living in China. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, when it when it comes to, to this question, it's um, it's a bit tricky because, um, you know, we, we are all men. So mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. I'm thinking, you know, most of us, we like girls. Right. Is that is that is that correct? There you go. So, um, you know, being materialistic is, in my opinion, okay, so don't, don't take it for granted, but I think it's mostly a girl's thing, that girls like, you know, fancy things and money and, and you know, designer bags and all of these things. I mean, men like it too, but I don't think we are very, um, you know, we are very much materialistic. We, we do like nice things, but, you know, we don't really care about, you know, how many I don't know, designer bags or, or clothes we have in the wardrobe personally. So um, are Chinese people the most like materialistic and then um, is it the most materialistic country in the world? Um, kind of from my experience, because, you know, the, the, the girls that I've met during my stay here before my wife, uh, you know, they all cared about, you know, the designer bags, the jewelry, the money, you know, how much money you make, uh, what kind of house you can afford, what kind of car you can afford. So it's, um, it is very materialistic, but mm -hmm. you know, if, if I want to compare it to England, you know, British girls did, you know, 
they're pretty much the same. Like, you know, they, before they jump into a marriage or a serious relationship, you know, they, they evaluate like, you know, how much money can a man make and, you know, what they can provide. But um, because there are more people in China, in my opinion, I think um, this like, you know, grows exponentially and you can, you can see, you, or you might experience that, you know, more people are materialistic in my opinion, but uh, I don't know what Corey thinks about it. Maybe, maybe he can, you know, elaborate more on this because he also has a Chinese wife. Um, yeah, sure. So my, um, actually I'm very lucky in the sense that my wife is not um, very materialistic. But I, I do think that um, being materialistic in China definitely does happen. Um, you know, I think everyone has kind of seen those silly cases where, you know, people would get married and the guy would buy like 25 iPhones or, or something silly for his wife. And you would be like, why, why would you do that? You know? Um, so I, I think that happens. But I think China is also a country of extremes in a sense where, you know, you can see extreme poverty, but you can see extreme wealth. And I think, especially because of, of China's history and China becoming so rich as of recent, I think people have become, you know, materialistic. And I think people are kind of proud to show that, um, you know, they, they can be wealthy, that they can be rich, right? Um, you know, where I lived in Guangzhou, uh, it was very common to see people, you know, that would have a Maserati or a Porsche or, uh, you know, whatever, right? And it's not to say that that it doesn't exist uh, in many countries, but from the countries that I have lived in, um, and maybe to expand on that without taking too much time, um, just traveling. I, I've been to over 30 countries, um, you know, be it in Africa or, or Europe or, or many different places. And I would say that, that right now, perhaps China is the most materialistic place um, that I have been to. And like that's coming from an American and we're kind of told that, you know, when we're young, that America is the most materialistic country in the world. And I think that when I came to China, um, I met a lot of materialistic people. And, and I think it's understandable, really. Like I said, China has become very rich. And, um, you know, what's, what's wrong with that, right? So, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Mike, um, actually, before, before we jump on to you, Mike, um, you know, I I can see that we are experiencing some troubles with the Correct. with the live stream. Uh, I can see that on Mike's channel it is working, but it's not mm -hmm. working on on yours, Simon, and uh, and not on yours, Corey. So I'm not so sure what what is going on here. I can see that people are watching it on my channel and uh, Mike's, but I can't see it on on yours, Simon. So. Uh, you might need to go into the streaming panel on, on your YouTube and press go live if you can. Or you might need to send me the, okay. uh, the code again. Uh, let me just quickly check my side. I think, yeah. do I need to uh, set my stream to public? I think that might be the issue. Never done this possibly, before. Yes. So, yeah. yeah, possibly. Oh, yeah, because last night we tried to do that and you set it to unlisted so maybe that that's right. the problem okay. sorry guys who, whoever's <laughs> already watching on on my channel and and mike's channel uh sorry about this little like technical issue that we have right now obviously we'll try to fix it as soon as possible okay then yeah, you should be able to to see me now i think it's fixed for me at least let's have a look i'll i'll refresh your Please yeah, abs do. absolutely. Yeah, it is working just fine on on your side, Corey. Awesome. So let's have, let's have a look if uh, if Simon's working as well. Okay, That's I awesome. just changed my setting to public. Now I think to everybody public. should be able to see me. Hopefully. Let's so see. let's see. Um, did you schedule a different time for yours? Because it says it's scheduled for. 17 19 in the afternoon oh i see so do i need to do some changes uh let me quickly see manage yeah i can see the feed uh is coming through but hmm 
Mm, so you might need to untick uh, schedule for later, I think. Then, then you're good to go. So it is working on Corey's channel just fine. That's good. Uh, it's working on mics. Where's the... Hmm. Okay, here. Edit. And I... Okay. Now I think it should be fine. I just need to click save. Okay. I scheduled for August 1st and 8.15. Now I think I wonder if you guys can see me on my channel. Uh, if you see. Oh, if you did it for 8.15. Uh, yeah, someone yeah. is waiting here. Okay. Yeah. I think you can just click. Hmm. So um, it got a go. countdown system, like <laughs> three okay. more minutes. How do I how do I change it to right now? Is is that possible to change it to right now? Um, it should be. So when you selected the uh, the time for schedule, there should be one called immediately or or something like that. I think. I see. Let me see. Hmm. So um. I am, Casual you know, just weekend. surfing through your channels. Corey's having, okay. you know, a cheeky McDonald's, as I can see. <laughs> Trying to get no, uh, I don't think I can change it to immediately. That's to immediately. Very unfortunate. No, no, I, what I what I saw is your your streaming time is two a.m. or something. Really? Yeah. Man, late streamer. All right. <laughs> uh, I saw like three people waiting on my side. Maybe you, Mike, you and me, and that's it. No, uh, I'm not or, in that one. Uh, I I just I, just I do saw, saw the... some people coming inside my channel. Like uh, so the countdown system is like two more minutes. Right. So I let me ask if somebody is inside my uh, stream. So one it's, waiting that's gonna be me and uh, probably someone else as well. From, yeah, yeah, maybe maybe uh, it's Michael Corey, I don't know. But yeah, I am oh, definitely some, okay. Right. Okay, yeah. someone says Yeah, you saw some hot potato though. Yeah, we have three or four people. So hopefully after the countdown system is done, we should be live on my side as well. Uh there you go. Uh, in the meantime, let's uh, let's read some some comments. You know, uh, respond to the people because we already have a lot of viewers. So, uh, Freestyle oh, thirty nine says all four of you guys are coming in loud and clear. Great VPNs, guys. Uh, little disclaimer: Corey doesn't have a VPN because he's such a rebel. He doesn't need one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Living a life. I don't think I need a VPN off. as well. <laughs> yeah, si Simon doesn't need a VPN either. So it's just uh, me and Mike. But I actually. Um, switch my vpn off for the stream and i only have it for youtube on so um but yeah it's, yeah, it's good same, same me. yeah so um in the morning it seems like that um you know the, the connection is is better in china the internet works better oh okay so yeah, um, yeah. there you go uh so yeah we have a couple of people on simon's channel as well like jack and uh, mr dark uh they are saying hello and it says the stream is going to start for Simon in a second. So let's wait for that. It should be a minute or so. Mm -hmm. uh, on Prime's channel, we have four seasons, one family. Hello from it Taipei. Says, waiting for Simon New. So do I need to do any change <laughs> on my side? Well, that's apologize I, for someone who's waiting. Uh, yeah, I think you might need to press go live um, now in, oh, the, I see. in the editor. So. Okay, yeah. okay. That might be the there issue. Okay, just give me a minute. There you go. On, uh, on Mike's channel, we have Sam saying hi, everybody. Uh, so, yeah, it's good to have you guys on. Okay. Oh, I need to click that magic blue button. Yeah, go live. Exactly. Otherwise, nobody's going to see me. Yep. So, if you, if you click it now, we should be able to see you in about yeah. five or ten seconds I'm because click, of the delay. Okay. Yep, now we are live, I think. Let's see. I'm so eager to see Simon. 
on his own stream. <laughs> yes, it is live now. Yeah, yeah. It is loading up now. That's yeah, great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, we are awesome. live. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So let's do another introduction. A little delay, a little 15 minute delay. Technical issues. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, you know, it's the first time that we're actually doing a four people stream. And uh, last, not last week, two weeks ago, it worked just fine with uh, with Mike and Simon. So I think it's um, it's because of Corey. America, <laughs> America again. It's America again. <laughs> America's fault. Yeah. Yeah. Like America. Everybody hates America. Yeah, I, I don't really understand, but uh, yeah. Anyway, welcome to the stream, guys. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are once again. Uh, so all four channels are live now, it looks like, and we are very happy about that. So uh, once again, let's talk about today's topic, which is materialism in China. We started with question number one, but uh, you know we had some technical difficulties, so we're gonna go um, over that question again and the answer shortly. Uh, you know we're gonna give short answers about it. Um, if you would like to rewatch the answers, probably if you surf around our channels, you can find the beginning of the live stream somewhere. Yep, you know, just ride the wave. Uh, so question number one was. Is China the most materialistic country you have ever lived in your life? So uh, let's try to keep the answers, you know, short because we actually have a lot of questions and a lot of topics to to go through today. So um, it was actually Mike who hasn't answered yet. So Mike, do you think that China is the most materialistic country? I mean, you lived abroad, so um, you can compare it to to other places. Yeah, I, I'm now living in Sweden and. Uh... I was in Australia for several years. Uh, I can't say China is the most materialistic uh, country over the world, but uh, as a Chinese, uh, I understand we we bring this uh, topic like Chinese treat money in a very different weird way. Uh, for example, like you guys talk about like uh, girls love. Uh, bags and uh, luxury things etc uh, you know in in if in a chinese company and if you uh, are claimed like uh, you are a rich guy in the office or something you will be treated better than the others uh, because uh, you know those like uh, flattery guys want to make friends with you and maybe can get some benefit from you. Do you understand what I'm saying? And uh, things like if you are rich in the office and uh, uh, everybody see you like uh, you don't really uh, need this job for surviving. And, uh, and uh, you know, uh, you just treat it like a hobby in the office and your boss is not that... Uh, dare to fire you sometimes do you understand the logic behind because you have money and uh, you don't really care but if you are like uh, you really living on this salary and you have a heavy uh, mortgage lending you have to uh, uh, return the the loan or something then they can do whatever they do on you because you really need the job you know so yeah. this kind of things, but I, I, I don't really experience it in Sweden. Uh, also not experiencing in Australia. And uh, so because in Sweden, I mean, the, the salary has some like kind of certain range. So if you are a manager, your, your salary is almost maybe doubled than the others, but you can not earn like five times than the others, you know, this kind of yeah. things. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I have to agree with you, Mikey. Yeah, that's, um, that's, a, that's a really good explanation. And, um, you know, it's, it's a really good opinion as well, in my opinion. Uh, Simon, do you, do you agree, disagree with Mike? Or, or uh, do you have a different opinion? Yeah, I think Mike makes sense. Yeah, his comments make yeah. sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's your, you know, like short, uh, short answer again, you know, for the, for the viewers that just, just joined us on, on your channel that, you know, missed the beginning of the stream because of the technical issue. So, uh, are Chinese people the most materialistic uh, or 
is China the most materialistic country you have ever lived in? Uh, so first of all, uh, hey guys, thank you so much for coming to the streaming today. And uh, for me, uh, to be honest, I can only say it from my own experience because I only lived in, I actually spent majority of my time in China and I lived in the U.S. for like uh, two or three years now. Currently, I am in Taiwan for two to three months. So I'm going to say uh, compared to the other two places, like uh, mainland China definitely is probably the most materialistic place I have ever lived. Uh, there are a lot of um, evidence, but I think uh, the most one is that people in China, they work really hard. Or you would say people in China, they like working overtime. Like uh, in Taiwan or in uh, America, I don't think anyone worked that hard, you know? I also been to uh, UK for a while, actually for like uh, two weeks. And then during the weekend, you can't find any bar open. And that kind of thing will never happen in China, you know. And in Taiwan, I also got surprised like several days ago. Uh, there was a very popular restaurant uh, in the city center of uh, Taipei. And like they only opened for like five days. And the other two days, they just got to remain closed. I was completely shocked. Like, how can you just go like take some break and <laughs> like twice yeah. a week right and uh, you have to pay that huge amount of rent and uh, for me as a chinese i probably won't be able to understand that <laughs> absolutely um cory what, what about you what do you what do you think uh, are chinese people the most materialistic is is china you know a materialistic country in your opinion just you know a shortish answer again if you don't mind uh short answer from from what i have seen uh, i do think so uh, again as I said before, I think it's it's probably because uh, China has become very rich recently, or, or at least a lot of people um, have. And, you know, I think when a country progresses from an aspect of being, you know, pretty poor um, and you get a lot of rich people, I think that people are, are excited about that. I think people are happy that they can have nice things. And uh, again, if, if I had 20 million dollars you know uh, i would i would probably drive a really expensive car too i mean why not right um so i don't i don't think it's something that is a, a just a china thing um but i think it is a thing that is really looked up to in china again because of the history um but yeah i, I think it's pretty materialistic but again i lived in guangzhou and uh, as a foreigner that lived in guangzhou a tier one city uh i did live in a nice area so it was very common for me to see also um, so that's that's my view on it, really. Absolutely, that's uh, that's awesome. So uh, we have loads of people uh, watching us now. So again, good morning to you guys. Uh, make sure that you hit that like button. You know, subscribe to the channels if you if you would like to see you know more China content from from us. We are we are all making you know China related content. So uh, you know we try to keep you guys uh, entertained as as much as we can. So. Um, yeah now uh my short answer you know regarding this question uh is china the most materialistic country um are chinese people really materialistic uh short answer yes i think so i think they are very materialistic but then again you know i i had experience in in the uk and, and um you know i think it's um it might sound a little sexist but i think it's only just you know women that are 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 um Corey, Corey's losing it. Yeah. So um, I think it's it's more like you know the old thing uh, that they are that they care about you know the designer bags and the designer clothes. In my opinion, like personally, I don't really care about you know designer stuff. As you can see, you know I'm wearing a Zhongguo leaning T-shirt. So that's not a, that's not designer clothes. That's that's like you know Nike in America or Adidas in Europe. So it's not it's not designer. It's a sports brand. So. Do you know what I mean? Personally, I'm not very materialistic and, you know, I never really cared about money. So, um, but once you're in China, you get, you can get infected with this, with this mindset that, you know, money is king and, and, uh, you know, money can buy you everything, which is, which is kind of true in China. Like, you know, most things can be solved with money in my opinion. And, um, you know, for example, drink driving, which is very serious in China, 
um, you know, I'm a driver myself in China. I drive um, my own car here. And, uh, you know, many people ask me, like, do you keep money in your car when you're out? And I ask them, like, why would I keep money in my car? Like, you know, I don't want anyone to break into my car and steal, you know, money if I have in it. And they said the reason why you should keep money is if you go out and if you drink with your friends, then you want to drive home. And if you get stopped, you want to bribe the policeman. So that's one way how, you know, money becomes important in China. And, um, you know, I personally know a guy who, who bribed the policeman before um, because he was drink driving. I mean, he wasn't like, you know, massively over the limit. He, he had like three beers. So the, the sensor showed that he had, you know, not much, but he was still over the legal limit because in China, the, this limit is, is very, very low. So even if you have like, you know, a beer and a half, you're still going to be over the limit and they're going to pull you over and they can actually take your license away for that. While as in England, you can have, you know, a couple of beers and you can still drive just fine and nobody, nobody bats an eye, right? England, best country in the world. You can, you can yes. do drink. <laughs> well, I want to add on something. Sure. Uh, I think the uh, situation changes uh, between province to province. Uh, yeah. If you yeah. are in Shanghai, if you are like drunk driving, uh, for sure you cannot bri uh, bribe the, the policeman and the policeman will not never take the money. Cause, so I think uh, in China it's quite big uh, in some uh, like uh, west, uh, western province, maybe you can do uh, this Maybe also. the third or fourth tier cities like uh, policemen yeah. don't get paid a lot. So they yeah. might take the risk, but in Shanghai was saying, uh, I don't think anybody dare to take the money from you guys because first of all, they got paid pretty decent. And uh, second of all, yeah. usually uh, there will be a squad, like uh, two, three or four people if they want to uh, try to catch the drunk driver. So, and uh, most of the time they will have those like uh, record cam on their shoulder. So, uh, yeah, probably won't take that risk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, what about you, you Corey? Have you have you had any experience with uh, with driving in China, you know, or or riding a motorbike or anything like that? Mm. Um, so a little driving. Uh, I didn't like it in China. I just I just didn't like driving. Guangzhou is very hectic. A lot of cars. It's kind of crazy. Um, I don't I don't know if it would work in Guangzhou to <laughs> to bribe a police officer there. But I know, um, you know, like in Foshan next to Guangzhou, a lot of stuff happens there that flies there that just wouldn't happen in Guangzhou. Um, you know, like black taxis and all of that stuff. Like if, if you try to do that in Guangzhou, like they, they really do get on black taxis and things like that in, in Guangzhou. So I think if you, if you tried to bribe a police officer in Guangzhou, I think, I think you would be making a mistake. But yeah, I, I agree. I think in some of the smaller places in China, sure, it, it, it probably happens, right? It, it has to. Absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. Um, so let me just read a couple of comments from, from you guys, from your channels. Um, so I'm on Simon's at the moment and somebody asked, why don't you guys talk about a certain place uh, in China starting with a T? Um, there are very good reasons. Um, obviously mm. Simon and Mike, they are both Chinese. Uh, Simon is not in China right now. Uh, Mike is, and I am in China as well. And uh, that is a sensitive topic. And that's the reason why we don't talk about it. We don't want to get in trouble. Uh, one of the main reasons why we don't talk about it is because we are not there. We don't know too much about it. So we don't want to say things that we, that we are not familiar and comfortable with. And I think all four of us, <laughs> and I think all four of us can agree on this one that, you know, we, we don't want to talk about things that we are not familiar with and we don't know much about. And I think that is a very reasonable thing to do and it's probably a very mature thing to do as well. And I talked about this um, in, my, uh, in my last video, little self-promotion, uh, that, you know, I don't want to talk about things that I don't know too much about. And, um, you know, some people pointed out that, oh, that's a very mature thing to, to do. 
I don't think it's a mature thing. It's just a logical um, thing to do. And it's common sense. Like, you know, I'm not going to talk about, you know, America and American politics because I never lived there. I don't know too much about it. And it's not, you know, down my alley. I mean, do you, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like, you know, the, I don't really like to talk about things that I'm not familiar with. I don't know if you if you guys feel the same way or 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 you feel differently. So you're you're being logical is what you're saying basically. Yeah, I mean that's logic. Yeah. It's I, like I saw sorry uh, I saw a, a message from uh, my channel. Uh, sure. uh, John Hurti said, "Could you guys explain the word to how? If you guys understand this uh, word." <laughs> Hmm. Like an uh, wow. unedu uneducated uh, Chinese rich uh, entrepreneur or something. Entrepreneur, yeah. I think uh, those to how probably usually have two meaning. The first is like they are rich, and the second of all, uh, they probably become successful just because of some um, connection, luck, or anything else. Or maybe their personal effort, but usually it means like. They're still uh, uneducated, or they don't. They lack a certain type of knowledge, right? Yeah. So uh, it, it's a negative word. Usually, it yeah. means hey, if you somebody call you too hard, it means hey, you have money, but you <laughs> probably don't have a very good education background, or you're not intelligent at all. I I give you an example. When I was studying in Australia, I got like classmates. Uh, uh, from China, and uh, their parents are from like Shanxi province. Uh, they they own a coal mining or something, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, they just uh, like uh, spend money like sending leaves. And uh, he was uh, like ran into my face, uh, show me a, a luxury uh, Lorex uh, watch. He said, "Since I graduated from the language center, my dad sent me this one." Which is cost like almost uh, 200 k RMB. So, this is uh, some kind of example. Do you know? Like uh, every when they reach some small target, they spend money <laughs> to celebrate, which is uh, ridiculous. Mm. I remember like on Weibo when people were talking about you know using that word a lot because it was kind of a word that like people kind of used for, for a while on Weibo. And people were talking about like, you know, Tu Jin. They were talking about like the golden iPhone. And like yeah. everybody was like buying golden iPhones, like the case. And I'm like, what is, why does everyone have this golden iPhone? And then people were showing me Weibo and I'm like, this is crazy. It was just yeah. like an overnight like sensation uh, on Weibo or something. I mean, the, the Tu Jin things shows like uh those uh, rich people has like very bad taste, you know, when they mm. comes to spend money. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, and and the other thing, what what Corey just said, you know, about the uh, the golden iPhone, it's um, you know, trends in China can get out of hand very quickly, like very, very, very fast. Um, for example, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, there is a chain brand called Happy Lemon. And they are selling like you know tea, like Chinese tea, and and uh, you know bubble tea, and like these big, like you know plastic cups or whatever. It's called Happy Lemon, and um, you know it, it went viral on on Weibo. And ever mm -hmm. since then, people are going crazy for for Happy Lemon. Um, I just remembered because they opened a new a new shop in in Jilin City. So um, that's that's one of the reasons you know why I think that. Um, you know, things like that that go viral can get out of hand pretty fast. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, let's move on a little bit and, um, you know, let's uh, nitpick some some comments from from the channels. Uh, Corey, do you want to do you want to, you know, lift someone out from uh, from the comment section from your side? Oh, um, let me look here and see what, what someone if someone has any question or anything, maybe sure. I can kind of uh, find something. Maybe if if someone else has something, I'll look really fast and then come back around to me. Sure, sure. Um, Simon, I mean, you have uh, the most viewers on your channel, so do you want to, um, you know, have a look and um, you know, so yeah, yeah, for something. sure. Uh, let's see. 
somebody asked me my opinion about Barrett. Uh, I did a video with Barrett, and uh, I think Barrett genuinely liked China. And uh, since Barrett and me we are kind of friends, so I'm not in the position of uh, making comments about him. Hopefully, in the future, I can make a video about uh, those pro-China YouTubers. But now, I think uh, let's just move on. So, uh, do you think controlling what people say will control what people think? Yeah, oh, absolutely. I think uh, uh, brainwash is definitely a thing. If I keep telling you the same thing over and over, um, you're probably going to believe it. Uh, if everyone around you keep telling you the same thing and all the information you, you get only tell you one side of the story, and for sure, I would say 99% of the people are going to believe what they've been told and it's all about viewership you go talk about tibet you're in trouble uh it depends on what you talk about and yeah um yeah i think uh let's just move on yeah absolutely uh quick question here from from your channel simon so Peyton says oh. how, can, how can you climb the wall and access youtube like this that's how I find. Uh, yeah, so you use a VPN, and I. You can't say a, that. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I think here, um, the the world is getting more and more sophisticated. But basically, if uh, you are trying to access those uh, foreign websites in China, uh, most of the time the VPN helps you to encrypt your message and uh, send it to a different IP which is not on that backlist. So then it helps you to, you know, uh, to do the packet transformation. Absolutely. All right. Uh, so next, uh, next thing that we're going to talk about is uh, examples in China that shows Chinese people love making money. So. Um, you know, can, can you guys share some examples that shows that Chinese people love making money? Um, anyone wants to go first or? Yes, Corey, tell me. Um, I think one thing Sorry, that, tell us. Sorry, it's not, not everything about me. Um, no, I think one thing that's interesting about Chinese people is that, and this is probably because of the technology in, in China too, is that anyone can kind of be a salesman, right? So you'll see girls on like WeChat, like selling clothes and purses. And, uh, you know, you'll see all kinds of people that have like their own small little business type situation. And again, that's, that's great because it's so easy to accept money in China, you know, here in, in America, like, Hey dude, can you give me your debit card? Like you can't, you can't easily run someone's debit card. You know, uh, in China, it's just so easy to send someone money. You can literally just stand on the side of the road and, and have a WeChat QR code and you can buy and sell things. And, and that's what, like, I think a lot of Chinese people do. They make extra money by doing that. Uh, I know that um, for a long time, you know, my wife's sister um, made more than my wife uh, just selling clothes, you know, on WeChat. And my wife, like her pay as a Chinese person is, is quite high. And it was, it was crazy to think that, uh, you know, she could just sell clothes, um, but she would buy she would buy crazy things. She would never buy like save the money, uh, which is strange for Chinese people. But yeah, I just I just think that um, you know you have that opportunity in China too. Sure. Uh, Mike, yeah. any anything? Yeah, uh, in in China, like uh, uh, in the other countries, like if you want to ask a friend to come out and have a cup of beer, and uh, you in the most of the time you won't like uh, uh, why why just myself pop up um i i put you up there don't worry we're all here we can all hear you and see you it just makes more sense to 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 put you in in the front so you know people can see who's talking <laughs> yeah so uh, <laughs> okay so uh it is uh, quite easy to gather like uh, colleagues and uh, friends come out to have a cup of beer without any purpose. But in China, you know, if I contact like uh, my old classmate 10 years ago, we, we knew each other in the college. In the most of the case, they say I'm busy. But uh, 
if you say like uh, I have a business uh, want to talk about uh, if you are willing to come come out and we can figure out how to uh, like uh, export uh, products to Sweden or something then they come out you know and uh, in the most of time when you introduce uh, a new friend to someone else and if you say this guy is a boss of uh, some uh, company then it's much more easy for you to make friends so i mean everyone may at least in shanghai in the mega city is looking for something uh, related to the money to earn money you know otherwise they they do not have time to uh, for those kind of activities so that's my example. Sure, sure. Um, Simon, any anything that you would uh, you would like to add to this one? Uh, you mean any uh, experience? Like yep. example. Okay, okay. So I think uh, there are quite a lot of example. Uh, uh, the first one will be the value system in China. So um, if you the definition of being successful in China mostly will be related to how much money you make and uh, what kind of college you graduate and how many houses or apartments you have. If you ever uh, be involved in a conversation with like Chinese uh, old aunties, like Chinese RE, then most of the time they will talk about, hey, how many apartments you got and what, uh, how much you get that apartment and and uh, how much money your kids get and what kind of college they go to. So I think that is a very good indicator of like how materialistic we are. Uh, so basically the daily conversation only, uh, we only talk this kind of topic in our daily conversation, right? So we, I don't think we talk anything else. Well, of course we talk anything else uh, about traveling uh, like recent uh, issues but uh, I would say most of the time you hear those uh, IE talking about uh, their real estate property plan in the future and on about stock market so I think that's uh, one of the indicator so yeah yeah uh, I have something to add on to Simon's okay. comments yeah. uh, when you talk about stock stock market uh, in the year 2007 or the year 2015 when the when the stock market surged to uh, like a uh, uh, growth so quickly mm -hmm. then a lot of uh, un uncles and uh, aunties uh, whether they understand the uh, uh, stock exchange or not they flood into the stock market to buy something without any research or pre investigation on the company so it is some kind of speculation um, when you can easily earn money in China then all the pe all those kind of uh, uh, people will follow you that's why we had some kind of issues for I think uh, it's uh, what's that called uh, P2P yeah, uh, peers to peers, yeah. Learning. yeah yeah so that that's uh, the the place so that like the majority of the the Chinese people get frauded. So uh, this is just some add-on. Sure, sure. Um, Corey, do you do you do you have anything to to add about this one? Mm. Yeah, I think I think materialism also uh, in in Chinese culture can also uh, is a part of Chinese culture in some sense because you know as a guy a lot of girls will request it like maybe you have a house or maybe that you have a car or something like that and maybe if you don't have that you know it, it could be issues because uh, especially like for me for someone that lived in Guangzhou there was a lot of guys that were great guys right like they they worked hard they were nice people and because they couldn't get a house because the cost of a house in Guangzhou is, is you know maybe it's not Shanghai right but it's uh it's pretty high and so a lot of those guys would struggle to find girlfriends even um, because, you know, they, they, the woman wouldn't even give them the time of day, you know. And I, I remember there were times like there was this um, 
instance where like people were advertising relationships in parks, you know, and they were saying things like, oh, you know, my, my son, he has a house and he has a car. You know, I, I think that's something that's very deep rooted in, in Chinese culture and probably because because of safety, um, poverty, I think I think Chinese people really uh, depend on, on having a house. You know, it's, it's like the first safety measure, whereas if in America, maybe there's a lot of people that just prefer renting. So I, I think and it's it's a form of materialism. Even. Yeah. Um, also, um, just to, just to add on to that one, you know, the dating, uh, the dating thing in China. Um, so um, some places they have these parks where the aunties and the uncles go out to to play as a matchmaker, and they take you know this like piece of paper with their with their grandsons or granddaughters like you know picture and and details saying like you know how much this person makes you know, what kind of salary they can expect, you know, what sort of materials they already have. And uh, that's one way to, to kind of show off and show, uh, you know, the, uh, the belief in, in, in materialism, in my opinion. In the Western country, maybe the salary is some kind of like privacy. You always uh, keep away from the topic. But in China, like in the majority of time, those IEs and aunties will ask you, what is your salary? And that is, might be a, a culture shock to the foreigners who just arrived in, in China. Absolutely. And uh, I have a, I have a, I have a subscriber bring up these real estate questions also, because uh, I think nowadays if in 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 the the first tier city, uh, if you are just uh, like doing a regular job, uh, the real estate is too expensive for you to afford. Uh, in Shanghai, it can normally it goes to like five million RMB to eight million RMB if you want to still living in. The, the suburb or not the city center. The city center is uh, like uh, super crazy now. Uh, so for the ordinary people, if you just earn like uh, in Shanghai, it's um, relatively higher than the other province or cities. It's like uh, around uh, 8,000 8, to 15,000. But it's, it is still very difficult for a guy uh, who working like a uh, Nine, nine and six and to try to afford this kind of uh, uh, apartment uh, and the, the mortgage lending uh, interest rate is very high compared to the other countries because in Sweden I, I pay like uh, one point some uh, percent uh, for my total loan and uh, every month I can just cover it no problem but in China if you take those uh, uh, commercial uh, loan uh, it goes up to six percent or something and we do have a, a house uh, founder it's called uh, Gong Zhijing. It, this one is a uh, relatively lower than uh, the commercial loan but uh, you still have to pay 4.5 or something i'm still paying yes. it until mm -hmm. now so uh, this is the situation in shanghai and uh, maybe it's reflecting to the majority of the the big cities yeah, absolutely. Um, so let's move on to, to the next thing. So there was a comment here that I couldn't bring up because it was on someone else's channel. Uh, and it says, do you guys want to talk about the effect of materialism combined with the nationalism? Now, that is a very interesting um, question. And uh, basically, it, it means, you know, the whole thing about China being, you know, great and the government being the best um, for the reasons that people are rich. So this is um, this is something that uh, I, I think we can talk about. Um, you know, I don't think we're gonna receive any backlash uh, about this. Um, so when you combine materialism with with nationalism, what do you think? What do you get? Is it you know a very narrow mindset, or are people you know uh, going to focus on other things as well, or? You know, people just going to stay close-minded and just focus on on materialism and and believe that you know uh, the country is the best and um, because of that they can have all these materials. <laughs> Corey, what what what, Corey. what do you think? Do you want to do you want to tackle this one first? 
Sure. I, I think one thing is that, is that China has really come a long ways. In the time that I was there, Guangzhou grew immensely. And I think one thing that was very interesting was that there's a lot of rich companies in China. There's uh, quite obviously the government is very rich in China. Um, but the government being rich and companies being rich is not exactly the same thing as people being rich. And while Chinese people are getting richer, there's still a lot of Chinese people that aren't rich. So I think a lot of Chinese people like to say, well, you know, look, look at all the beautiful things that we have. Look at all the beautiful things that we've built. And, you know, it, it's kind of in America, a lot of times people care less about that. They're, they're more concerned about my space and my, you know, my house and my stuff, right? And so I, I think uh, it, it does become a part of nationalism. And, and I think that uh, the only issue with it is that a lot of the stuff that are, are beautiful in China, uh, that, are, that are not natural, of course, there's a lot of natural beauty there too. Um, a lot of the things are, are either companies or, or either, you know, again, Big Brother, right? Absolutely. So, Simon, uh, do, do, you, do you want to explain your yeah. opinion? Uh, this so i think uh nationalism uh there's a huge piece of nationalism is actually coming from materialism because uh china is not a uh let's say democratically elected uh, government right so they lack a certain type of legitimacy to uh tell people that uh, we should govern the country so usually they will say um they were choose this materialism to uh, prove that they are being successful in China. So uh, I think you guys probably heard this quite often, like uh, whenever there's some problem, some uh, thing happening in China or someone makes some criticism about China, then uh, even the government and a lot of people, they will make that excuse. But China have lived 1.4 billion people out of the poverty or but uh, there's a huge uh, economic development within the past uh, 30 years. So they sometimes use this uh, materialistic achievement to justify some of the things they failed to do, or they try to uh, uh, justify their legitimacy. So um, I'm going to say, especially nowadays, you can uh, hear more and more from, the of, uh, from our official media that uh, they always talk about this. Uh, Usually they try to uh, boost their nationalism. You, they always use some like uh, uh, materialistic footage, like uh, skyscrapers, uh, fancy public infrastructure stuff like that, and like uh, military power. So, yeah, uh, I think nationalism and materialism they are uh, correlated with each other in China. Absolutely. Uh, Mikey, uh, anything you would like to to add to to this one? Yeah, I, th I think the the definition about the uh, rising uh, of the the country is quite simple. Like uh, when in the school, you always uh, hear those kind of story, like a uh, hundred years uh, of uh, humiliation uh, from the the colonizer, <laughs> you know, period, and uh, our country was like really poor. That's the the all the reason that why we were defeated or something, and then now we are getting richer and richer. Then it's the time to fight back or something like this. This is the basic theory of those nationalists has. Yeah. Absolutely. So that yeah. Um, so Mikey, there is a question on your channel that you you would like to bring up. Uh, do you want to you want to ask Simon this question? Materialism, I'm Ch Chinese. Uh, oh, did, oh, okay. Yeah. So, what Simon? The the question is, uh, what do you think about uh, different values in Taiwan? Different values in Taiwan. Well, I would we'll say uh, Taiwan and mainland China they share a lot of similarity because they uh, uh, most of them share the same root. So when I come here, I don't feel I. I mean, uh, ordinary life, I don't feel too much differences, but yes, indeed, there is some um, uh, difference, which is quite hard to explain in a short period of time. But I'm going to say people here, they are uh, more, um, I'm making a generalization. It might offend a lot of people, but I would say uh, most of the time, you feel people are more civilized here. 
So, yeah, uh, compu especially compared to. Oh, oh dear. I just heard somebody's feeling. Damn. <laughs> risk. So, especially in, um, you know, in China, we ha it's, it's a large place. So we have third, fourth tier city. And if you ever go to a uh, very populated place, sometimes it will be quite chaotic, right? A lot of people, they don't follow the line. But in Taiwan, uh, you will never experience that. Everybody is following the rule. I would say sometimes I feel uh, the order we have is even better than a lot of Western country. So, and also in Taiwan, I feel people more, they tend to enjoy their life more often. I mean, in, in Shanghai, uh, I feel like people are, uh, the, the past in Shanghai is very fast. Like people just go there, go here, and they uh, work, they, they are willing to work overtime. But in Taiwan, I feel like people are, uh, enjoy their life more uh, than people from uh, China, I would say. But that's just my uh, short experience. I only lived here for like two or three months, and there are a lot of uh, differences for sure. But yeah, let's just. Absolutely. Um, um, so let me just, uh, you know, cherry, <clears throat> excuse me, let me just cherry pick a comment from. Um, from Corey's channel, Four Seasons, One Family, sorry, Four Seas, One Family says, thank you for putting this together, Zach B. You don't need to thank me, you need to thank these guys that they're willing to put up with me and, you know, and then it, nothing, no, it's not about you, Corey. <laughs> Just because he is your <laughs> subscriber, that doesn't mean it's about you, man. <laughs> but yeah, um, thank you guys for, you know, joining uh, this live stream and, you know, willing to talk about this uh, this topic. I mean, um, you know, some people pointed out that we um, that we are competing against another stream. Um, I don't know who they are talking about. I don't know. Do you guys know who they are talking about? Is there another stream about China? Are there other YouTubers about China? You know, personally, I, you, I don't you know mean, any of them. You mean the Kantong um, show? Oh, um, something to say. I, I don't think that this is a, a competition at all. And the reason for that is because all of us have very different ideas and very different views. You know, you've got, you've got uh, a British guy here and you've got an American and you've got two Chinese people. And, um, you know, to be honest, like we're not going to sit around and circle jerk each other. We have our own opinions. I think so, that is a different thing, right? Right. I, it's, I, I don't feel like we're competing with anyone. I feel like we're doing something different in that, in that way. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, it's, it's definitely not a competition. Um, you know, if, if people think that we are competing against each other, then, you know, that's just the wrong mindset. Um, no. Hey, Zach, I think uh, your audience means, are we competing with other people who are doing the stream at the same time? Uh, yes. Do I answer, understand the question right? Yes, that's, uh, that's, that's the one. So, um, you know, I don't think we are competing against another stream or, or, or other people or even against each other. Um, you know, for, for me, it's not a competition. I do, I do YouTube because I enjoy doing it. And, you know, it's a hobby for me. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but, you know, for me, it's just a hobby. I'm not even monetized and, you know, I'm very far from it. So I don't really care about it personally so uh, definitely not a competition for me anyway let's not waste time on this one i think we explained this very well i'm winning you are absolutely winning in my opinion um now some pros of materialism i mean we only talked about you know the negative things and why you know being materialistic is a bad thing why is it a good thing that you that you can afford you know the latest Huawei phone, or you can afford the latest, I don't know, Apple laptop or whatever. Why is it a good thing that you can, you can buy things? What, what good, um, what good does it do for you? Is, is it, is there a good side of being materialistic? I know it's, it's a difficult question, but, but, uh, I think there are some positives that we can, that we can highlight about materialism. I can see you guys are thinking very, very hard. You know, like think uh, tank. Can I go Mike? first? Absolutely. I I mean, the positive side is uh, 
during this like uh, 30 years open up of our country, I do really see the, the improvement of our uh, living standard uh, for sure. Like when I was a kid, I was living in like 10 square meter uh, apartment without uh, sanitation. Like uh, you have to go to the public uh, uh, toilet uh, to take a dump or something. So uh, within this uh, like decades and decades, uh, of course, it, it is helped by the other countries, like USA is the most, I think. Uh, our country get a, is getting richer and richer. And uh, now we, are, we have the ability to access all those like modern stuff. Before it wasn't. Like uh, when I was a kid, I was, it was hard for me to buy a transformer toy, actually, in China. It will cost like uh, almost one month uh, of my parents' salary. But now you have all these uh, things that you can afford with. So this is uh, the, the positive side, uh, for sure. Uh, if you want to deny or not, it's, it's, the, it's the, the fact. And before, like I, I can say like 99% uh, of the Chinese people has no car. Uh, you know, now you see those cars everywhere. So. And, uh, you know, for those old uh, neighborhoods, you, you don't even have a space to park a car. So that's, that's the positive side. Absolutely. Yeah, I completely agree with uh, Mike. Uh, I think uh, having a certain degree of materialism is, um, uh, is good. Because if you don't have, like, materialism at all, like everybody is about spiritual, then nobody gonna work right i mean uh, for the past 30 years uh, those economic achievement is not achieved by like only the leadership of the government but by everyone's hard work so if people don't care about money then nobody gonna come here and work 24 7 uh, in those in construction site and how do we build those bridges uh, public infrastructure over like two or three years uh, while those kind of construction might be completed for like 20 or even 30 years in some like developed country right so i think there is no doubt that having uh that's the good side or positive side of materialism Absolutely. because indeed uh, for the past 30 years uh, especially for us uh, ordinary chinese people we can see the improvement economic wise and yeah yeah um like like you said um I also have to agree with with Mike on 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 this one, and um, you know it's um, to to some degree, yeah. You you need to to be materialistic, and you need to like have this mindset that you know I I need these things um, because sometimes things become necessary. They they become like have to things. For example, a phone, like having a phone, you know, in two thousand and twenty is is a have to material you 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 must have it otherwise you can't live like you know in in most of china like using alipay or 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 wechat is is something that you can't avoid and the the only way that you can do it is by having a phone so you know that is a material that you must have um having a house is another material that you know you must have i mean i'm not saying everybody should buy a house but everybody needs a place to to live in so you know even if you are renting that that is kind of yours like you are the one living in it you're not outright owning it and you know in china you can't really like outright outright own a house so you know I, I think you know what I mean by this, but then you know having designer bags and and all of those things these are not necessary materials. So um, you know there is a very fine line with this one. Like you know I don't need the Gucci bag, but I need a phone. If it's an expensive one, then you know that means I can afford it. But I need a phone either way. Um, and then it's down to my personal, you know, choice and decision if I want to get an expensive one or if I want to get the cheapest one and probably replace it in six months. So, you know, personal choices. Um, Corey, what, what do you what do you think of, of about this? Are there any any other pros uh, regarding materialism? Um, yeah, I, I think I can agree. Um, materialism is is a requirement, and the reason that it's a requirement is because, as an example, when a lot of foreigners when we come to China. 
you'll hear them like whining and complaining. They'll say, oh, there's, there's no toilet paper in the bathroom, right? Because that's like a very basic expectation in the West, right? And that's something in China that, that people have adapted and, and kind of worked around. Everyone carries, you know, um, toilet paper essentially in their pocket because they realize that, you know, it's not going to be there when you go to the bathroom. But it's definitely changing in China, right? Like in Guangzhou, there, there are so many places now that you can go that because, you know, probably Chinese people got tired of it, right? They're like, there should be toilet paper in the bathrooms. And I'm sure they've complained and they've pushed. And uh, now you can go to a, a mall or, or whatever, and there will be toilet paper there, right? So there has to be that standard. So I think that that's something too, is materialism is not just about, you know, not, I'm not taking away from what anyone is saying, but it's not always about Gucci bags. You always, you, you have to have that standard also, of course, a, a minimum standard. And I think that's one of the shocking things, again, to foreigners, is when we come to China and some of those basic things that, that maybe foreigners are not used to, when they don't get that, you know, it's it's very it's very different, right? It's just very different. Absolutely. Um, actually, I have I have an example for you guys. Um, so, um, you know, in China, it is hard to buy the Audrin sticks like this one. So that is that is a kind of material that you know I can't live without. Uh, mm -hmm. You guys won't understand Simon and Mike because you know Chinese people they don't sweat apparently. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think it is. Oh, sorry, I was racing popular, again. Popular God damn it! Now, now China. I'm gonna get canceled. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think uh, a small fraction of people do need to use deodorant in China. So, uh, yeah, we have some old mindset that saying um, uh, having a certain type of smell is bad. Uh, but now, as uh, we got more and more developed, so people actually tend to. Uh, be open about that so actually if you go to a 7-eleven or family mart you can actually find this type of amenity maybe in a third tier city it's still not available but for sure in shanghai you can actually find it everywhere it's quite popular actually yeah absolutely so um but yeah that that is one one kind of um you know material i must have otherwise people gonna you know not they won't you know get closer to me because they 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 will think I, I smell bad or something like that. I don't know. It's just a foreign problem. You know, people people are talking about, you know, all the foreign privilege, but you know, this is a, a problem that we have that we are facing as foreigners because we smell like shit. <laughs> so um yeah, anyway, uh, there are loads of comments to 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 go through. Um freestyle and 39 says, is Corey starting a GoFundMe for his legal fees against a certain lawsuit in China? Um, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to start on GoFundMe.com uh, slash uh, Corey's fund for legal fees, um, I believe. So if you want to donate your last pennies, go ahead and do it. <laughs> Please. Because he needs it. Um, anyway, uh, you know, let's, let's not drift uh, off topic. Uh, let's uh, let's move on a little bit. Uh, what are the reasons? Why do why do people become materialistic? Why do why do some Chinese people become so materialistic that they that they think that they need to buy you know the tenth Gucci bag and the and the second Ferrari and the third Lamborghini and the fifth you know G Class Merc? What why do they need to to get to that level? What's what's the reason? Why do they want to, you know, get a get a second Ferrari when you can only sit in one at, at a time? What's what's the reason? Why do people um, hoard these things? That's the right word. That's what I was looking for. So why why do people, you know, want to get like three iPhones, for example, at the same time? What's what's the reason behind it? Corey, what what, what do you think? Um, I, I think in, in Chinese society, I think being rich and wealthy is something that is perpetuated a lot. Like if you watch Chinese TV, especially girls for like dramas and things, like it's always rich people. Like all the people are rich. They, they rarely have like that, that like really poor guy that the girl falls in love with, you know. I just think that like, you know, it's just something that, that people see all the time. It, it, and, and again, I think it's also about a lot of the history too is, is – People have started to get rich in China. But I, I, I think, again, uh, you see it a lot. Um, 
on television. Of course, you see it a lot on signs. To me, it's 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 a lot like Los Angeles is in America. You know, you you go to Los Angeles and like it's way different um, than than the rest of America in a sense. Um, you know, people there maybe are more stylish, more more materialistic, and uh, I just think it's the same way. I, I think uh, if you're in Guangzhou, Shenzhen, Beijing, Shanghai, you're, you're probably going to see more more materialism in those places. Absolutely. Um, just a little disclaimer before we we move on to to you, Simon and Mike. <clears throat> Obviously, this doesn't apply to to every single Chinese person. We are not generalizing. You know, we are talking about you know maybe the top. I don't know, 5%, 2%, I, I don't actually know. I don't have any numbers, so I'm just taking a wild guess. But we are talking about people that can actually afford these things. We are not talking about, you know, the country as a whole and, you know, um, the ante down the road, you know, picking the trash can afford a Ferrari because, you know, that would be stupid. Like, you know, I don't think any of us are stupid here and, you know, we want to generalize like this. Um, anyway, uh, Simon, do you want to do you want to share your point uh, and your opinion on 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 this um, question? Uh, like I've mentioned before, like uh, in China, uh, materialism is the whole definition of oh, actually being rich is the whole definition of being successful. So uh, I think that's also one of the reason why when people have one or two houses, they keep buying more because more house means more successfulness you will have right and the uh, same goes with those luxury uh, stuff uh, people buy it so they can um, kind of like showing off to their friends or their pals like hey i got three or four rolexes and i got a, a private jet stuff like that so um i mean in china the issue is that we don't have anything to uh value for so most of the time you and your friend you, you guys uh stay each other you always talk about some material you have either it's a house or a uh a beautiful girlfriend or stuff like that so it's yeah it's sad it's uh it's largely due to the current system we have i think so uh but i also think uh we, there's another type of materialism that is uh, a lot of uh, people who uh, uh, stay under the poverty line. You can see a lot of people, they work extremely hard, right? Uh, they are willing to work overtime in the factory. And I think it is also due to the uh, welfare system we have. Because in China, we don't actually have a very good welfare system. So people are just on their own. So if you are rich, then you are fine. If you are poor and you, let's say you get a cancer, then you are probably in big trouble. I mean, in first year city, yes, we do have a, um, a average or decent healthcare system, but in some second or third year city, they, their welfare system is completely trash. So, yeah, that's also why people are so materialistic in China because they know if they don't have any money, they're gonna lose everything if they ever face some accident. So, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's um, it's it's a tricky thing, and you know, it can sound really bad that you know Chinese people are materialistic, but you know. It is in the culture. Somebody pointed it out in the uh, in the comment section that you know it's a really part of the culture, and uh, you know it's um, it is present. It, it, it presents itself more than, than than it does in the Western cultures, and you know they kind of have a right to it, so they kind of earned it. That's um, that's that's what the comment says, and you know I actually have to agree with this. I Corey? think. Uh, uh, sorry. sorry. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Mike. Sorry. Yeah. So I think I, I agree, Simon, uh, very much about this uh, uh, idea he brings up because Chinese people feel insecure in the majority of the time because of uh, the, the social security system has more or less uh, problem, especially like medical system and uh, education system, etc. Because in, in Sweden, they don't do a lot of like saving up 
also, but uh, they do have like a, a free uh, education system and the medical system. So you don't have any worry about uh, the the retirement after you 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 know you retired and uh, you, when you're living on the pension. Uh, in China, the pension isn't very enough for for the old guy to cover their medical expenditures. So that's why you need to worry about your your like later ages so when you don't have a lot of ability to earn money. So that's why from very early ages, my parents asked me to saving up something. So this kind of psychological things always applies to the Chinese. Yeah, and go back to to the uh, why people buy like uh, luxury things, etc. I think uh, I think buy a, a Lamborghini car or uh, Gucci bags. These kind of things are mainly f uh, pointing to those like full art die, like second generation of the generation, riches, yeah. Be yeah. because because they don't have any like dream to realize. They they don't know how to spend the money in a correct way. Maybe to build up uh, some some company to make some good things to the country. I'm not. Uh, I I don't mean like everyone, but uh, in the majority of the times, they are just like spoil the children and uh, living overseas and uh, they have like huge chunk of money in pocket so that's why they spend the money in this or that or even uh, like uh, on girls yeah so that's what i want to say uh, sure. corey corey you can bring up your ideas um yeah so i, I kind of want to uh, say that I, I i definitely agree with with uh, both of you uh, simon you know and uh you, you below me. I definitely agree with you. Uh, the social system thing is, uh, I think that was one thing to me that was that was really shocking about China was that um, you, you see things in China that say like, oh, socialism this and socialism that. And then you realize that for Chinese people, the social systems are, are, are not very good. And a lot of the systems are contributed to Chinese people out of their own check, out of their own money. You know, the housing funds and the medical funds and things. And then uh, sometimes the restrictions on them are, are really extreme, like maybe you can only take so much out of your housing fund, you know, per month or, or whatever it may be, right? And, and maybe your, your medical fund, you can only spend so much at one time. And I, I think that's something that we really take for granted in the West is how good a lot of times our social systems are. And uh, I think that's one of the reasons that, you know, pretty much everyone in China does have a job, right? Whether even if it's just sweeping or something, you know, doing some basic labor job, everyone in China seems to work because the alternative is just you, you would have nothing, right? That's that's pretty much what you would have. So I, I think it's an interesting concept because it's something that we talk about in America is that we should get less social systems. And I think a lot of Chinese people want, you know, more social systems. They want more help, of course. Yeah. Uh about the medical system, uh, I have a colleague who just passed away uh, years ago, and uh, he was uh, uh, di diagnosed uh, in China. He got a leukemia, uh, and uh, he was uh, taking the the medical system in in Shanghai, and uh, then he he moved to Sweden, and uh, he got uh, his main like treatment in Sweden. And uh, when I uh, was like uh, his last days, uh, when I were there, he told me, Mike, uh, here in Sweden, which he, he meant, uh, they they care about me like 24 hours uh, every day. And uh, he, he said, I don't have to pay anything, anything. It's all covered by the, the medical system in Sweden. And uh, he said to me, uh, I will donate all of my uh, properties and the savings uh, in Sweden rather than move it back to uh, to China after I passed away. So this is show uh, a very typical case uh, how the people are treated in different countries, especially between Sweden and uh, China. Yeah, absolutely. And the uh, the other thing is like, you know, uh, about healthcare. 
Um, in England, in the UK, we also have the NHS, which is basically free healthcare. And, you know, people don't really appreciate it. They, uh, they cheat the system. They, they use it for, for bad things. And, uh, you know, they're always trying to find loopholes. And I don't think people realize, you know, how valuable it is to have uh, free healthcare and to be able to go to the hospital with uh, whatever problem you have and, um, and, you know, get treatment for free. Um, so I don't think people really, really understand and know how, how important uh, this is in a society that, uh, you know, having healthcare to, to, to take care of you basically. Um, I know, mean, for, especially for free when it when it when uh, it comes to like the price. I have more things to to talk. Sorry, uh, in in Shanghai now because this is the the richest uh, city in China. We we uh, got those uh, hospital which is uh, uh, seems like the top hospitals uh, of China. And uh, now, if you if you want to have a reservation, <laughs> if you want to have a have a reservation, and uh, then depends on which which uh, depend on the the level of the doctor you are going to uh, to see they charge you differently so if uh, it's a, like a senior level uh, uh, like a doctor then they charge you now it can be up to 200 uh, for the diagnostic and uh, if uh, some just graduated uh, uh, doctor you pay 40 rmb or something see what i mean they they measure this uh, in in money which is ridiculous i i even saw one doctor charge you 1000 for a time uh, so but this is uh, you know every time when you go to the hospital it's not like uh, in the Western country, you got a very patient doctor talk to you like quite a long time to understand your situation. It's just a go in there and uh, they treat you like uh, on the assembly lines and uh, in the same method. And uh, they, they send, they ask you to do like those checks. Oh, you, you have to uh, do, do a, a blood test or something. Then they bring back this kind of test, look at the data and uh, they just, uh, treat you in very same way you know it's not uh, like understand the certain patients understand their situation and uh, give them proper treatment that's uh, another thing i want to bring up absolutely um just a little side note uh before we jump on to you corey um you know simon received the super chat so um simon would you like to address that one i mean there's no comment to it but i i yeah uh, Kane Ray, do I pronounce his name right? Kane Ray, thank you so much for your donation. Thank you. Um, but yeah, Simon, you've been you've been quiet, um, you know, for a while. Do you want to do you want to share your opinion about uh, about things? Uh, about the healthcare system in China. Uh, either healthcare, or we can, you know, take uh, take a U-turn, and we can talk about, you know, the uh, the materialistic uh, thing regarding um, healthcare. Yeah, uh, I think uh, healthcare system in China is uh, good and bad. I would say because my mom, she's a, a, a doctor uh, in China uh, and uh, in Shanghai. So I want to say. Uh, I think the good part of uh, I, I I can only talk about a uh, healthcare system in Shanghai, which is the place I live in. I know uh, there's a huge difference be, uh, in terms of healthcare system between cities in China. So in Shanghai, I would say, of course, we have the I would say we have the best healthcare system uh, across our country. And I'm gonna say. Uh, in terms of like, if you get some small uh, disease, like or like, if you get a flu, or if you get some uh, small things, uh, it's okay. When you go to uh, uh, a hospital in China, actually, you don't pay a huge amount of money because in China, doctor uh, get very low payment compared to a lot of Western country. So, just take an example. I would say uh, a typical doctor. Uh, they usually make uh, maybe 
10,000 to 20,000 RMB per month. So each year they probably get like, uh, usually let's say 200,000 RMB. So which translate to US dollar, it's gonna be like uh, 30,000 US dollar, which is nothing compared to the West, right? In the West, you probably can make $300,000 per, uh, per year or even like a million dollars. So uh, my point is that uh, because of the low payment, uh, usually if you get some like small disease, uh, you don't have to pay a ridiculously amount of money. And also um, uh, Mike just mentioned like uh, people treat uh, patients very impatiently in China because a lot of time we only have limited uh, resource here in China, especially in Shanghai, uh, those large hospitals, they're not only treating uh, um, patients around the city, but they are actually treating patients across the nation. A lot of places, they don't have like those big hospitals. So they have kind of have to come all the way to Shanghai and to get their treatment over here. So uh, take my mom as an example. Every day she has to uh, take care of maybe uh, on an easy day, maybe 80 patients, but on a busy day, maybe more than 150 patients. So she don't actually have that like Jerry, they know she doesn't have enough time to be patient to every single uh, patient. So that that's the uh, practical side. So so it means in China we don't have enough doctors for our uh, citizens. And uh, uh, I would say it's kind of like positive and negative. And also, if you get a very serious illness like. Um, Mike just mentioned if you got a cancer or leukemia, then for sure it will cost you a huge amount of money. Uh, in Shanghai, a lot of treatment are taken care of by the social security system, but most of the time, a lot of um, treatment uh, need to be self-sponsored because they are imported like treatment. You can get a basic treatment from the uh, our national fund, but if you want to get like those. Uh, like advanced treatment, usually you need to spend a lot of money. And also I think uh, China also uh, imposed a huge amount of tax on those imported drugs. I know in a lot of people, they can't afford uh, those uh, imported medicine. In China, they have to uh, you know, fly to India, or either go to Hong Kong or Taiwan to buy those medicine themselves and then bring them back to China. Absolutely. Like you want uh, medicine thing. Yeah, yeah the, I just wanted to ask uh, Mike because he was very eager to say <laughs> yeah. something. The, I think uh, the the uh, the medical system uh, we can claim those like inpatient fee like uh, those expenditure like man labors, but the material we are talking about the materials and like the medicine and the material using in the surgery. Usually, if you want to get good material, it's uh, imported from the U.S. So those things are very expensive. Correct. And, correct. Yeah. So. And also, I want to bring up another thing that because the doctor is underpaid in China, so they have to find ways to generate their profit. So, uh, uh, if you ever know some doctors, you will know like uh, getting some uh, sponsorship from those uh, medical manufacturer is not a real thing. Okay, almost all doctors. If you have, um, you know, if you are in charge of like making prescription for a patient, then you will uh, get some of the benefit from those medical companies, and that's very popular in China. It is also unfortunate that because um, of the current situation. So yeah. Yeah, but back to what Sam uh, uh, said, uh, like uh, his, her, his mother. Uh, is uh, very busy every day to to see the patient. Yes, it is true because uh, we got like uh, this trust crisis uh, upon on the the medical system. You you you're always looking for Guanxi to find uh, some doctor that you know. Maybe they will treat you better. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, true. And uh, you know. Uh, people only trust those like big hospital. We we have like a uh, tier system for the uh, hospitals as well. 
like in China, you got like uh, three tiers uh, are the most uh, best uh, hospital. And uh, people from the other province always come to Shanghai to look for those uh, medical organizations to get the treatment because they don't trust the local small hospitals. And uh, that's why you got like tons of people in the the famous well-known hospital rather than a small clinic uh, in the local neighborhood. So that's another point. Absolutely. So um, I just want to add one more thing. So I saw somebody on my chat uh, ask me, uh, what kind of um, healthcare costs, what can be treated for free? Well, that's also a kind of difficult question and largely depends on uh, sometimes it, even depends on what kind of company you work for. So uh, it might sound ridiculous to you guys, but in China, you know, uh, if you work for some national companies and if you reach, or if you, or if you work for a um, certain type of uh, institute uh, from the government side, then if you reach to a certain point, you can actually get free healthcare. And it's not uh, on record, you know, so uh, some of my uh, grandparents' friends, they work in those uh, uh, institute and uh, yeah, uh, the healthcare system won't be able to cover that, but the company they work for actually will uh, spare some fund, some personal fund for uh, their employees. So that's why a lot of people, they are willing to work for those national companies, even uh, they don't look very attractive from the outside. You just do some very uh, meaningless work or some very basic work, and uh, you don't actually get paid a lot. Uh, uh, I mean, f if you look at it from the outside, but actually you get a certain type of benefit hidden, which is hidden like people don't see it from the inside. So, and yeah, so that's basically, uh, it really depends on different cases. So for sure, if you are a high senior officials in China, then you will get the best treatment. And usually you don't have to wait in the line. Absolutely. I know it, um, it, I know it sounds ridiculous when when you spend uh, your whole life in a, a, a tedious op a position is uh, just for some occasional crisis happen in the future <laughs> for yourself. <laughs> but Maybe. actually... So, so before uh -huh. before we drift drift off to to another thing, sorry, Simon, to interrupt you. Yeah, no I just problem. want to ask uh, because yeah. I have I have a question for Corey, and he has something to say as well. So let's start with his yeah. uh, his hey. opinion and what he has to say. Then I will ask him the question. Um, so my experience uh, with Chinese in hospital in China was um, I went to a hospital that was not. I think a lot of cities have that main hospital that is maybe the really rich, the really nice hospital. I almost died in China, actually, and I, I actually went to a hospital that was not that main, very nice hospital, and I the cost was very little, to be honest, but the quality was very, very little, too. I was in the emergency room, and, like, I don't want to sound like I'm, I'm taking a dump on China, but there was a guy smoking in the emergency room, and I have, like, oxygen in my nose, and there's, like... There's like mold on the wall and uh, none of the doctors spoke any English, of course. And when you're that sick, you, you, you can't speak English as a foreigner. You're definitely not going to be speaking great Chinese. And, and so my wife was talking to them and um, I was there for a week and it was very cheap, but the quality was, was very poor. And, you know, they, they actually brought a doctor um, that spoke English from the main hospital um, once the uh, American embassy, the consulate had gotten involved and uh, he was great. He was awesome. He was, um, you know, I, I can't say more good things about him. Um, and then later on, uh, after I had recovered and gotten better, I actually went to the, the main hospital uh, in Guangzhou, the international hospital. And so I just kind of want to say like to, to any foreigners or I mean, Chinese people obviously know this already. Like to any foreigners, like if, if you can go to the international hospital in, in your main city, like go there. Don't go to like a small clinic or don't go to like the the smaller hospitals, because if you're from from the Western world, you you, you might be severely let down. And um, as, as you know, uh, Simon and, and uh, Mikey down here said, 
it, it's largely because of the population, right? It, you, that's one thing as a foreigner, when you go to China, the population, no matter where you're from, because like I live in Chicago, I've been to New York, I've been to every major city. Uh, I, and I lived in Tokyo for a while. And it was like to, to go to China was like eye opening. And you realize that uh, everything in China, even the medical situation is a battle between population and quality. It's, it's very difficult uh, a lot of times. So yeah, any foreigner, like if you get sick, go to the main hospital because it, it, it will be, you know, 10 times better usually in, in my experience. You know, Absolutely. That's all I so so the, the, the question that I have for you, and uh, you know, I'm gonna flip the coin basically. What are the three, uh, like if you go to a hospital in America for, mm -hmm. for any reason, uh, can you get free treatment for anything? Is, is there is there a possibility to get free treatment for for anything in America? So um, yeah, if, if uh, basically if you're a person that lives below the, the poverty threshold, um, you can usually get some kind of uh, free health care. Of course, um, if you live above the poverty threshold, which does kind of suck in America, there's some people that are like, eh, I'm not doing too well, but they're not poor enough to. You know what I mean? And there's actually quite quite a few people in that position. If you have your insurance card and you have the money, you know, like I have a savings, an emergency fund, and uh, if I have to go to the hospital, I will pay that deductible, I will pay that fee, and my health care will be great. It will be amazing. Um, but if you're a person in poverty, you know, and you're not poor enough, perhaps you're stuck in the middle. Whereas if I think in China, um, you're, you're pretty much, you're always going to get some kind of coverage. And that's not to say that in America that you won't get help, um, that you won't get coverage. Uh, you'll just get a big bill in the mail, basically, that you'll probably never be able to pay off. So, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, like I said, you know, the NHS is is completely free in the UK, and um, you know, we have. Re I think we have good healthcare, um, but obviously, it's it's crippled because of the current situation and you know the mismanagement of 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 the government but you know that's another issue i don't want to you know dive into this because it's not uh uh not really you know involved in in today's uh discussion uh anyway there's a there's a quick question here uh zach what city are you in and what city is prime living in and simon and you know might as well involve mikey since he's here um let me just quickly answer this one so you know i'm gonna be the the first one to answer because I love myself so much. I live in Jilin, which is northeast Jilin province. Um, Corey lives in Chicago at the moment, like you said earlier. Simon is in Taiwan. I'm not sure which city are you in, Simon. Taichung right you now. There you go. And Mikey is in Shanghai, as far as I'm concerned. Is that correct? Yes. There you go. There you go. Knowledge. Knowledge is power. <laughs> <laughs> all right and uh, now there oh my god sorry i need to address this question because it's so silly i i I'm, I'm sorry guys i i promise i won't you know drift off topic anymore zach would you fight kirk for charity so i think he's trying to set up a ksi uh logan paul thing <laughs> here uh i mean you know i don't know all right, let, let's 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 go on to this one. Corey, would you would you do a charity fight with with anyone from the from the China scene, like a KSI um, Logan Paul kind of thing? Um, not with Guelo sixty, um, because he's like. <laughs> well, do you, um, uh, let's let's not say names. Just you know, keep, just a just a yes and yes and no. You know, um, would you fight anyone from the current China scene? Uh, no, for I money. Want, I don't want to break an old man's hip, so no, I. I <laughs> um, it's just a fun question. So, um, so Simon, would you would you you know do a charity fight with anyone from from the China YouTuber scene? Probably not. But if you get <laughs> like very influential, I think uh, then might you may get some motivation to do certain type of silly thing. I think uh, I know the KSI and uh, Logan Paul they probably can make millions or even like hundred millions of money or viewerships just based on that. So yeah, I, I'm not being materialistic, you see? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, My, Mikey, what about you? Would you would you uh, do a charity fight with, with anyone from the YouTuber scene? No, 
I do YouTube as a hobby, as I said. Um, I mean, Quilosity or Kirk can raise maybe 2,000 USD for his uh, birthday <laughs> uh, celebration. But uh, this is not the purpose that we're gathering here. So, okay. no. Uh, yeah, uh, let me just add, you know, my, my two cents to the end. Um, I, would, I would definitely do it with someone. Um, you know, I'm not going to say names, but, you know, it would be good fun. You know, it's it's a way to entertain people. And, you know, this is an entertainment like platform. We, we are here to entertain people and share opinions. And that's that's a sort of entertainment. So, um, yeah, see, at least you guys have a sense of humor. I don't know. I mean, you know, I like to think I'm a I'm a funny. Well, I can't say that word, but yeah. <laughs> I, I always thought I'm boring when I make videos because, you know, <laughs> I'm not that kind of character. But yeah. I'm, I'm happy to, to see Corey's uh, videos, uh, very, yeah. very entertaining. Now, I guess so Lauren says, what is the purpose of this gathering? So, yeah, we're kind of drifting off topic. So, sorry, guys. Let's, let's jump back into, into the main topic. So, um, about materialism in China, is it going to change in the future, do you think? Is, is there going to be a change uh, regarding materialism in China? Um, what, what, is, um, what is the reason that might change? Is it like, you know, um, an influence from the government or, or an influence from the outside or, or people just going to like, you know, simply like, you know, turn around and be like, from now on, we don't want Ferraris and we don't want money. We don't want anything. We're going to live on the countryside and we're going to build, you know, uh, dirt houses from now on. Is is I, is there is there a possibility that this is going to change? I can go first. I think it, it it is possible to change overnight because as you can let's see, look back to the history. Uh, before the the eighties, we were not that uh, materialistic. But uh, when the government decided to open up our country, it's like suddenly everyone is ch chasing that. But so if some like top decision making to go back to like the old time maybe it will happen overnight so this is my opinion absolutely um corey what, what do you think is is there um an opportunity or is there um you know a reason why uh, why this is going to change um i think that, that it's something that if it happens will happen because of natural progression of people uh as an example even, even though um, you know China has its long, long history, the government is still very new. And uh, countries like America and the UK, our governments have actually been around longer than China. And so our people have socially progressed further than a lot of uh, people in China, actually. And I think that at, at one time in America, you know, it, it's definitely had its same thing where a lot of people now seem to care um, less about a lot of that stuff. You know, you can actually live next door uh, to a person that's very rich and you would never know that they're rich, right? It, it, it's very common in America. So if I think it happens in China, I think it will happen because of natural progression. Um, but, you know, the thing that Mikey said is that uh, if the government wants to decide to do something in China, they will, they will definitely do it, right? And they will definitely make that change. But I, I don't see that happening because I think that it's a positive thing in the eyes of Chinese people and the outside world to look and see that Chinese people are driving nice cars, that Chinese people have nice things. So I, I, I don't I don't think that uh, they're going to change because I think it's a, a unfortunately a very good propaganda piece um, to say, hey, look, you know, we've pulled all of these people out of poverty and uh, everyone can afford Starbucks now. So, um, you know, that's that's the way I feel about it. Uh, Simon, anything, uh, anything to add to this one? So I think I, uh, I will agree with uh, Prime in China. I will agree with Corey uh, because I would say, yeah, I mean, the, like I mentioned before, the legitimacy uh, the government have is solely based on materialism, like I mentioned before, all right? All, uh, economic achievement, all those public infrastructure. Um, whenever you talk about some um, bad thing about China, they always use that as a shield to try to uh, deflect all the problems. So 
And currently, they haven't figured out another way to prove their legitimacy. So I would say in the foreseeable future, uh, the government still will use uh, materialism as a way to, how to say, uh, to, to protect their legitimacy. So, uh, I mean, if we don't have legitimacy, what else do we have, right? I mean, if everybody focus on morality instead of materialism, then instability will happen in China. That's a very sad situation. So, uh, but I do agree with Corey that uh, uh, generally speaking, uh, like the natural progression also proved that when people get money, they want more, they want more spiritual stuff. We want to have, be able to write our own article we won't have a certain degree of freedom average people want to be able to make decisions for their future instead of being told by anyone else right so i think uh it will happen to especially a lot of uh young people when they got money and they want looking for change but i think um uh, from the government side uh i don't think they are looking for that change because uh they are pretty satisfied what they have achieved in the past 30 years and they want to keep uh, to do the same thing in the future just based on what happened around us you can actually tell uh, or get some hint from what they actually have done in uh, the past two or three years right uh, and if you check all those major events everything is correlated with uh, what they want to do in the future so I'm going to say materialism will still stay the same. And unfortunately, that is just what it is. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I, I have to agree with you guys and, you know, just my, uh, my two cents in the end. Um, obviously, there needs to be, be a balance between being materialistic and being, um, you know, spiritual, if you would like to call it that. So, um, but it's difficult. It's difficult because, like you said, you know, people that have money, they want more money. People that have a Ferrari want another Ferrari. People that have an iPhone want a second iPhone. So, you know, it's, um, it's also being greedy. And greed is, uh, is something that's infected. Um, I wouldn't say, you know, all the generations that we uh, currently have, but maybe our generation and the next generation is going to be um, infected with this uh, with this greedy greedy attitude and materialistic mindset so maybe it's going to take a couple of generations until we see some significant change um i i kind of have to disagree with mike about you know uh, things can change immediately i think this is this is a slow process but that's just my opinion so um you know you're entitled to to your own but in my opinion this this is going to be a long uh, a long journey for uh, for change um this is going to be the last question that we're gonna that we're gonna pull up uh because uh we are reaching the two hour mark and uh, as we said we we are planning two hours uh tops so uh, froggy asked an interesting question do you think that the money as culture has hurt traditional chinese culture and that is a very um historical question so any any history teachers here chinese history teachers that can elaborate on on chinese history or or uh, predict the future do you do you think uh, money as, as culture has hurt the traditional chinese culture is there an influence on on Chinese culture um, from the past? Anyone wants uh, to I, wants to go first on this one? <laughs> <laughs> very simple answer. I, it's very sensitive. I, I don't think money hurts the the culture of the the traditional Chinese culture. It's the 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 communism and the Marxism hurts the traditional Chinese culture. Um, so let me let me ask you a, a question question there. So, um, you know, um, China got robbed uh, several times in history, and uh, you know uh, they tried to colonize China and they they took you know artifacts and and artwork and and money and valuables from China over time in the past. 
Um, do you think that had um, an influence on China when it comes to materialism? Do you think that uh, because of that, Chinese people and, and Chinese culture is more materialistic because they are trying to get those things back? Is, is that think, a reason uh, from, behind it? From the history, the traditional Chinese culture was attacked by the Mongols at the first uh, during the, the Yuan dynasty. Then later yeah. on, it was the Qing dynasty, the, the, the Manchurian uh, came to, to the, the, like the, the central area of, the, of China and it hurts the traditional Chinese Han culture. And uh, I don't think uh, the, the current colonial period has some kind of uh, uh, hurt or wipe out our traditional Chinese culture. So I, I'm not very good at history, but this is what I, I understand at least. Yeah, I think actually money is part of the Chinese tradition. You know, uh, we, our parents uh, generation uh, try to collect wealth and they tend to uh, save those wealth for their future generation. So I agree with Mikey. I don't think money actually break Chinese tradition, but instead like, uh, like communism or just Marxism, they don't actually belong to Chinese culture and especially during the Cultural Revolution era, that's where uh, Chinese traditional culture got totally destroyed. So I think like uh, I now I can answer one of your questions you asked me before, like uh, what's the difference between people from mainland China and Taiwan? That is uh, in Taiwan, I can actually see the traditional culture we have been taught in those uh, Chinese textbooks. Uh, from our history lesson, but you can't actually find it in China anymore, but they largely preserve it uh, in Taiwan. So that's one of the big issues. Absolutely. Um, Corey, anything to add? Yeah, um, you know, as someone like that, that lived in Japan and, and spent time in Japan, I really was amazed how well they mixed their culture and how they mix their daily life and, and, and moving into the future. And that's one thing that I had really noticed about Taiwan was Taiwan is really good at that too. Taiwan has managed to keep that culture. And uh, I was really shocked the first time I went to Taiwan because I was like, this is more China than China. You know, I was like, um, when, I, when I first came to China, that's what I expected. You know, I expected all those really cool taken care of temples and then like I walked into China and there were like these huge buildings. Like I was like, where's all the, the temples and all those parks that, you know, Guelo 60 loves so much. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and then eventually they built those parks. But, you know, I was, I was amazed when I went to Taiwan because I was like, there's just so much culture in Taiwan and maybe it'll make some people angry. Um, but I think if you're one of those people that are searching for Chinese culture, I think you should go to Taiwan. I think if you want to see technology and, and future and, and that type of stuff, I think mainland China is great for that type of stuff. Um, and I do think, um, without going too much into detail, because I, I do realize that um, two of you guys are, are in China. Um, yes, I agree. I, I think that Big Brother has um, had a big part in, in throwing a lot of that away um, and getting rid of it because it wanted to create its own culture, right? And, and that is the culture that, that it's going to portray. As far as money um, being in China, I think yes, but I, I think that sometimes as a Western perspective, we look at that negatively too. Whereas if I think like a home bow or something, like even though it's money, like it's not, you know, that doesn't mean that like you're necessarily uh, greedy, that you're necessarily materialistic. Uh, a lot of people, you know, will just give Hong Bao away for the holiday and it'll be like one or two. It's not like, you know, here's 6,000 renminbi, like it's, you know, it doesn't happen that way. So I think that it is a part of the culture and I don't necessarily think that it's all bad, right? I think sometimes it's just good fun. So. I think now we preserve those small things like... Uh... Zongzi, uh, eating uh, like a little bit zongzi, like a uh, uh, dragon boat, uh, uh, and these kind of like, things. Uh, or lantern that you dumpling, can, yeah. yeah, yeah. 
but uh, we lost the the main part of our culture. If you want to see those real, I think Japan derived the, the, the very uh, like a uh, similar uh, Han Chinese uh, uh, culture, and uh, they did some like a modification localization for themselves. But uh, I mean, if you want to see those architectures and the gardening and the, those beautiful things, those things are. Uh, are derived or, or partially from the Han or Tang dynasty, so I don't think uh, we we preserved our history in a, a very good way, and uh, not too many people realized that, and they still think they are the 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 authentic descendant of the dragon, which is uh, ridiculous. Mm. Um, so Simon, you you pulled up a comment here in in our private chat. Uh, before we jump into that one, and I, I promise that's going to be the last one because uh, we really need to, you know, finish up this stream. As as much as I would love to to do this for another hour, unfortunately, uh, some of us have other things to do. Now, Freestyler thirty nine says, Zach, please tell Simon that I love his videos. There you go, double thumbs up. But Thanks, he yeah. can't keep calling himself an average Chinese guy when he's married to a Taiwanese wife. So now you are not, you know, an average Chinese guy. You're an average Chinese Taiwanese, Taiwanese guy. Is that a thing? Is is that well, okay to say? I don't think so. I still consider I am ordinary Chinese. Still, even I have a, a maybe a different uh, experience. Uh, from many other Chinese living in China, but still, I would say uh, because I received all my education uh, before graduate school in China, and I lived in China so long, so I still consider that I'm an ordinary Chinese student, and I also want to represent those Chinese who are share the same value as me, but they can't share their views in China. I think I would like to speak up for them. So yeah, I am an ordinary Chinese student. And I think Mike will also agree with me. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, let's quickly run through the comments. So I really appreciate this honest and open discussion. Yeah, that's what we're all about. You know, we don't discriminate. We we don't have you know um, any problem. Simon, you is so handsome. Yeah, he is the most handsome out of all of us. Yeah. Thanks for the comment. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is how real communication happens between East and the West. All right, uh, so the last question uh, for today, and uh, so sorry about this, guys, uh, whoever's watching on whatever channel, this is gonna be the last question for today um, because you know we have other things to do. Um, you know, in the future, probably next week, you know, I'm gonna put this out right here. Maybe next week we can do another one um, if, if you guys feel like it, because uh, it seems like, you know, pe people will like it. And, um, you know, maybe we can have another person on. Uh, people requested to have China Bill. Uh, people requested to have Serpents a Day or Lawa 86. I think they are a bit too big for us. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think they're a bit too big for us. But maybe maybe Corey can hook us up because he, he, he knows them. So um, you never know. Um, I think it is a possibility that next week we're going to have another one. I think, um, you know, it's it's up to you guys. I'm very happy to host it again. You know the the stream is here. I'm very happy to 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 do the comments and everything. And next week uh, we can fix it up and we can actually have all the comments show up because I just figured out what the problem is and why we can't see it. So we can definitely figure that one out uh, if you guys feel up for it. But for now, let's jump into that last question because we are running out of time. Is the cause of materialism the lack of a religious base to the culture? And that is a good cliffhanger, I think, to, to, to finish this show on. Um, Mike, would you like to uh, go first on this one? Uh, it's uh, too difficult. Maybe it's, it's too Corey. difficult. <laughs> So, um, Corey? Maybe Simon or Corey. Or can... Corey yeah, Simon or Corey. Mm. Um, so, uh, I'll start by saying that uh, I'm an atheist and, and I think religion is like, right? I, 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 don't, I don't believe it. But I think it's, it's interesting in, in Western society how religion has shaped our society. Even if we don't believe, like it has still, still shaped our society, certain beliefs, um, certain ideas 
certain things are, are kind of universal in the whole world. Like, you know, like you shouldn't kill people. I think everyone, everyone knows that pretty much. Um, but I, I think that there are some ideas and things that uh, I've noticed as a Westerner that maybe for, for some Chinese people, not all Chinese people, um, you know, it's, it's like um, a, a thing of, of uh, you know, just because uh, someone else did something doesn't mean that you should do it too. Uh, you know, and, and some of those types of things um, that we've learned in the West, um, maybe from religion, uh, doesn't doesn't exist in China, and actually that was one thing that I thought was very interesting about China when I first went there, was because for me, uh, like I said, I dislike religion, you know. So um, I went to China and found out that maybe people were more spiritual, I guess you would say, right, than than religious per se, and uh, I found spiritually uh, China was great in that way. Um, but religiously, uh, you know, it's, it's maybe it's it's difficult to be super religious in China, right? So, yeah. Absolutely. Um, Simon, would you like to, you know, share your opinion uh, on this one? Yeah, I'm going to say uh, the degree of, I mean, materialism exists everywhere in the world, but the level of materialism we have in China is probably way higher than a lot of play religious uh, country or area um, especially uh, we, we talk about the positive side of, of materialism but today we don't have a uh, minute enough time to talk about the negative side of materialism right so uh, actually traditionally in China we do have um, uh, like Buddhism we have uh, Taoism so uh, people in China, traditionally people in China believe those like, uh, it's called yin guo bao yin. They believe the cause and also uh, what kind of uh, uh, things, uh, what, what you do will reflect what you will have in the future. We also, traditionally Chinese people also believe in afterlife. So uh, if you ever come to Taiwan, you know like uh, my, uh, my uh, family from my uh, wife's side, they all believe those kind of things. So they will say, hey, you shouldn't do a certain type of thing, A, B, C, because uh, it will after uh, it will affect you in the future. And also it w if you ever have an afterlife and, uh, or if you have another life after this one, then the things you do in this life will cause something. If you do some negative thing, then it will cause some bad luck in, the, in, the, in your future life. So uh, people believe in that kind of like in Chinese. I know how, I, I don't know how to translate it in, in English, but, <laughs> but uh, in Ch China, we don't have that anymore. I mean, uh, I will, we, we still have it, but just majority of people don't believe it anymore. So that's why uh, people will do all kind of thing to achieve success when it's in China. So just like two or three months ago, there's a coffee shop chain company called Luckin, which is basically the Chinese Starbucks. They just uh, make up their own revenue in order to uh, go list on uh, the American market, right? Also, we have those fake uh, vaccine, fake milk powder. It, it is just due to the uh, materialism and the lack of uh, religious religion we have. So yeah, I want to say those two things definitely correlate with each other. Absolutely. Uh, Mikey? Yeah. Well, once again, just a short answer. I think uh, the religion like the Taoism and the Buddhism, now it's it goes to very fluffy on the surface of the, yeah, yeah, the belief system itself. Uh, you can you I, I visit a lot of temples people just go there burning the the incense and burning a candle and put it somewhere uh like a pray for fortune or good luck for their life but they do not focus on the 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 main part which is the spiritual part and the, the belief and the inner beauty or or anything else uh, this is the the downside when when so much traditional Chinese culture were wiped out during the disaster 10 years, decade, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, unfortunately, I can't really add anything to it because you, you guys said, you know, all, all the things like Corey started with, with his thing and I was like, okay, now I'm going to say what Simon actually said and, you know, 
<laughs> I think Mike got trapped in this as well. That you know, it's uh, he ended up talking about the uh, the spiritual thing. So, yeah, I I can I can only agree with you guys. And um, yeah, I think that is it uh, for uh, for today. Uh, one more comment from Freestyle Thirty Nine. I must say, British guys make the best moderators. <laughs> yes, you are. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> excuse me. Anyway, so uh, do you guys want to plug your channels uh, one more time? Um, Corey, do you want to plug yourself uh, one more time on on the stream so people can find you and subscribe to you? Um, sure. Yeah. So, um, like I said, Prime in China is my channel. Uh, most of the content is me uh, talking about propaganda from shills, as you would call them, uh, here on YouTube, and just me debunking it. Uh, sometimes funny, sometimes not. Um, please check me out. I would really appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, Simon? Uh, yeah, uh, thanks for tuning in today. And uh, I'm just an ordinary Chinese dude. Sometimes we'll post uh, my honest opinion and my real experience about China. And sometimes we'll just do some average vlog. And yeah. Awesome. Uh, Mikey? Yes, uh, I, I want to thank you all the, the, the audience. And uh, my channel is now focusing on the Chinese topic. and. For sure, in the future, I will do the same. I'm going to do uh, like uh, several days conquering the Wu Kingdom vlog things uh, in the near future this summer. But uh, I'm not going to like fully focus on China, China topic. Maybe in the future, I'll travel back to the Europe and I'll, I'll travel around the Europe and do a comparison to uh, between Europe and China as well. So my topic will not only limited on China topic, but this is the main focus that I'm doing, at least for for the near future. Thanks, guys. Awesome. awesome. All right. Uh, so as the, you know, moderator, the British moderator, let me plug myself last. <laughs> um, thank you so much for watching, guys. I, I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, obviously, you can find my channel. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm getting the corona because I'm sitting next to Corey and I'm not social distancing. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so, yeah, you can find my channel. It's called Zach P. You're going to see a very, very handsome guy in a red jacket as my logo. That's me. You can click on my channel. I have about 650 subscribers right now. So feel free to come over to my channel. I do videos about China. I live in Northeast and Jilin. So I do most of my videos here and I show what my life is. And sometimes I talk about, you know, interesting things and, um, you know, just um, general things in China, like, for example, how to spend your money, what kind of holiday you can have and all of these things. So if you want, you know, a regular, ordinary British guy talking about China, feel free to, to join the gang and, you know, check it out. Um, as for the stream, uh, I thank you every single one of you for joining us. Uh, it was a very, very fun one. I really enjoyed it. Um, hopefully, we can do this next week. Um, I would be very happy to do it. Um, Corey, how, how do you feel about uh, probably next week? Um, would you be interested? Sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, Simon, uh, how, how do you think? Uh, what does your audience think? How, how is this uh, stream received? Do, do they like it? Do they dislike it? Do they hate you now? <laughs> I don't know. I think everybody likes me. So, yeah. Because uh, you're yeah. I think if I don't have anything else to do with my wife, I think I can tune in and do a live stream with all of you guys. Awesome. Uh, Mikey, uh, any, any plans for next uh, next weekend maybe? Yes, uh, if uh, my wife doesn't. Uh, like, <laughs> nice, you have a new topic. Like <laughs> Chinese yeah. students are mainly yeah. governed by their wives. So, yeah, yeah, it's, but, uh, it's the government oh, oh. that governs it. It's the wives. <laughs> yeah, but I'll, I'll right, make then. it uh, as possible as I can. So no worries. All right, uh, there you go. There's one more thing. Lola Fali is live right now. I just wanted to put this one up. Guys, go over to that channel. He is awesome. I love his channel so much. Uh, that's as far as we can go with him, unfortunately. Uh, I yeah. tried to have him on, on one of my live streams, but um, we ran into some issues uh, regarding censorship and, uh, and uh, things like that. So uh, unfortunately, uh, I don't think he is going to be a guest on our show, but I will talk to him because uh, I, I do I do have him on on a few uh, sites, and uh, we can probably, 
you know, come up with a solution for uh, for this issue. But uh, for now, that is it for today, guys. Uh, once again, thank you so much for watching tonight. Tonight, well, it depends where you are. Uh, today's live stream, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, make sure that you subscribe to all the channels, like all the videos, leave a comment, leave a like, share the videos and all those things. And we will see you guys next week, hopefully. Goodbye. Yeah, see you guys.